Hello everyone, I'm Mia Shadan. I'm the founder of Women in AI Ethics. I'm here in New York City at the IBM Analyst Program Day 2. I'm excited to have with us today Isabel Gomez Vidal, <laughs> who is the Chief Revenue Officer for Dun & Bradstreet, who is a key IBM partner. So I'm excited to talk to her today, and as a leading woman in AI, I would love to get a perspective on her career journey and what advice she would give to other women who are aspiring to leadership in this um, AI age. So that said, let's get started. Welcome, Isabel, it's so exciting to have you here. Thank you, I'm so excited about the conversation that we're about to have. Amazing. So let's just um, get started here with your impressive career journey, it's so inspiring. You have a career of over two decades, mm. you've grown multi-million bus businesses into multi-billion dollar <laughs> businesses. You started your journey at a very young age in Spain. Mm -hmm. You overcome many obstacles, including <laughs> you said your broken English. <laughs> Please walk us through your career pathway and how, what were the key decisions that brought you to your role today? Yeah, so, so let me give you a little bit of background. So I've been in the data and anal analytics and, and technology industry for the last 25 years. And uh, I've been um, a huge, huge um, advocate about um, and, and passionate about the intersection and convergence of data and technology. And so, as you said, I started my career um, early in London. I packed my bags from Spain, went to London, and I've always been very, very attracted and uh, interested about different cultures, different languages. Uh, different ways of doing things. So uh, I started my career back in London in financial services in Citibank in an internship program. Uh, soon after that, I had the amazing opportunity to join a very small startup technology company where I was able to do all different things from pre-sale to sale to implementation of systems. And then fast forward, I joined Moody's Corporation in 2007 where I was 16 years uh, doing different type of roles from managing P&Ls to becoming the Chief Revenue Officer for 16 years. Relocated to New York uh, with my family. I've got a, 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 my, my husband is from the US. I've got two boys, um, very diverse. They speak two languages. And um, uh, you know, six months ago, I joined uh, DMB uh, as a Chief Revenue Officer. And it really was, uh, the reason why I joined was there is so much going on with AI and data is so fundamental and so important. Having ethical data and trusted data and, and verifiable data is absolutely critical in this AI revolution. And I thought there is a mission behind that is really important where we can make a difference and so here I am. Amazing. You, you have an incredible story and you're an entrepreneur <laughs> at heart and from a very young age and you took that in every role, whether it's a big company, small company, you've brought the same force with you. Love it. Um, so let's talk about technology. Mm. We talked about data. Now technologies are not built in a vacuum. Mm. They do reflect the values and priorities of the organizations that are building them. Can you talk about some of those shared values that IBM and DNB um, that brought these two organizations together. Um, how do they show up in mm -hmm. your partnership in, in AI? Mm -hmm. And also, if you can talk about, there were principles I read about which, which you have adopted mm. for responsible AI, um, responsible development of generative AI. I know a lot of questions, <laughs> but if you could help us walk us to do yeah, sure. that, how you came together and yeah. what that looks like yeah, in practice. Sure. So uh, our relationship with uh, uh, IBM is a long-standing relationship for many, many years. We both are innovative and forward-thinking um, you know, companies and organizations that have thousands and thousands of customers globally. And when I think about um, the, the relationship that we have and the values that we have, there's so many commonalities, right? We think about a data, responsible data, responsible AI. We talked a lot about trusted and verifiable data equals to trusted and verifiable results. And so um, in this relationship and journey, we came together because we realized there was a huge amount of transformation in the procurement industry about responsible suppliers and having transparency and visibility of the suppliers that you're doing business with. Think about the reputation, think about the ESG elements around that, the diversity and inclusion elements. So we thought with our data, we could power up 
uh, can be powered up through Watson X Orchestrate and really start creating meaningful impact to procurement professionals. And so that was the beginning of our, of our journey. We now, uh, IBM is one of the first users of this platform called Ask Procurement, and now we're making this available to our joint customers, which is thousands and thousands of those in, in a very short order. And we both, as a company, has ethical governance uh, council, so we take you know, data and technology and LLM models in a very uh, serious way when you think about the values of inclusion, when you think about provenance of the data, right? Where am I sourcing that data from? Is it coming from ethical providers? Think about explainability, think about transparency, all those are, are the core values that both companies, you know, share. Amazing. There is um, the biggest critique, if you will, of large language models has always been that, that these are black boxes. We don't know what's in them. And I really appreciate how you're demystifying these mm. by adding more transparency to these bl seemingly black boxes yes. so yes. that these can be interrogated and deployed ethically. Yes. Yeah. So that's very key. About your role as mm -hmm. a CRO, it's mm -hmm. unique. Mm -hmm. You being in this position, this leadership role, the role itself has shifted right mm -hmm. over the years. It feels like it's no longer about dollars and cents. And mm -hmm. what does a values-oriented, uh, inclusive leadership in AI look like? Mm -hmm. And what I'd love to understand more uh, from your perspective is what's this unique value mm -hmm. the, that women bring to mm -hmm. this role? Yeah. So look, I think AI has changed and impacted all of us, all industries, whether you are a leader, uh, you know, in the healthcare or financial services or a public organization, retail, media, it doesn't matter. It's really impacted our lives, both on a personal, family and children, but also at work with our employees and our customers. And so you have to be a leader every day when you get up in the morning thinking, how can I make a difference with the employees, with my family at home, right, with my peers, right, and with, with every body that I'm uh, having interactions with. Um, I think AI gives us an opportunity, especially as women, to really think deeply about embedding the values of, uh, you know, transparency, uh, of, um, you know, of thinking about values around being uh, doing the right thing and being ethical about where are you getting that data from. There's a lot that we bring to the table. And there's a lot of opportunities for many women around the world to get involved in, in AI. You don't have to come from an engineer background, right? You don't have to be in technology to actually be involved in, um, in, in AI, right? Um, and my children are involved in AI today. And really, how do we interact with them and education in a way that is used in the right way? I love that you said that it's so important because for a lot of women it is daunting to come into the space because they they look at the space and go I'm not an engineer I'm not a you know data scientist mm. can I do I still belong do mm. I belong in the space so thank you for sharing <laughs> that because that's super important uh, do you have any other advice for women who are trying to position themselves for leadership roles and say they don't come from that technic supposedly technical background mm. and they have a, a little bit of a they might have feel like they don't belong hmm. or they don't have the expertise. Can you give some advice as to how can they position themselves for those roles? Yeah, I think you have to be relentlessly curious. And if and that means you have to be a lot of information available to you where you can self educate um, and you don't have to ask permission to be part of the conversation and you know to to have a seat at the table so really be curious and that means what you do day to day who are you speaking to who are the network of people that you're interacting with just put yourself out there and be curious and be confident right be confident and you don't have to ask for permission for anybody to tell you whether you have the right to be part of that conversation i Thank you for saying that and saying that aloud because for a lot of women they can feel like they don't, the voice is not being heard because and they don't they don't want to step up, mm. they want to do that because again spaces are not very welcoming to them. But to your point, we need to just do it. And curiosity is a common theme I've heard from Ritika Gunnar, whom we yeah. ha had a great conversation with her earlier this morning, yeah. and she also stressed the importance of always being curious and raising your hand. Mm -hmm. So it's great to have role models who can show us how it's done. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so I'm enjoying this conversation a lot for that. Uh, you are not only active at work, you're a leader at work mm -hmm. in your professional life, also at home, obviously, <laughs> you're raising wonderful um, boys. You're well, also very active in supporting diversity in the community. Mm. You're on the board of Parsi, which is an organization, I believe, who's based right here. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the role and the importance of these organizations yeah. in elevating these voices and helping more women and marginalized voices enter this field? Yeah, I, look, I, I think it's important to give back, right, all right. the time. And um, so I'm part of the advisory board for the Posse Foundation who really helps underprivileged uh, students to have an opportunity to get access to knowledge and information. And I think knowledge is everything, right, in life. And democratizing knowledge and making available for people to make decisions is absolutely critical. And Posse is really focused on creating the next set, set of leaders, right? Doesn't matter what background you come from, it's about giving opportunities. Uh, AI plays a role into this, and uh, so I'm excited about you know the progress that we're making. Incredible! I think this important. This is the right time. This is the right work, and this is what we need to move women into those positions, because one third of the tech workforce is women, and it's we need that support yes. to help them get to the next level. So, um, Isabel, it was such a pleasure. I would love to wrap this up with some parting wisdoms and thoughts that you might want to share with our audience? Yeah, uh, look, I mean, I have so many, right? But I just think um, for anybody, because we're talking a lot about AI, for let's demystify what AI is. It's not in a black box. It's more transparent than we think. And just reach out to people that can help you to get into this uh, industry and uh, make sure that you have your own board of directors that act as a sounding board to help you to get there. That's such great advice. You're absolutely right. You surround yourself with people who want the best for you and can help you get to that next level in your career. So thank you so much again, <laughs> Isabel. Thank it was you. such a pleasure to have you here. And to folks who are at home or work watching, uh, just know if you're thinking about a career in AI, don't let anything hold you back. We've heard from amazing women today and you, it is possible for you, regardless of what background you come from, find your board of directors, always stay curious, reinvent yourself for this AI world because uh, the AI space needs you.